waterfall chart in Excel. In this video, we're going to see how can you do it step by step and why it's important to have a waterfall chart in Excel, how the waterfall chart in Excel can help me. So let's start here, understand the waterfall chart in Excel. I can see the growth of the accumulated values and I can also see the total here. I can compare each one of the categories who just sold the most in total, or even I can compare each one of the categories by month. Basically, the first thing that you need to have is a data set. And in this particular example here, you don't need to use as the same data set as I am using here. You can use your own data set, your own spreadsheet. The first thing that you need in the first column is to have the categories. As categories here, I'm using some regions, some cities names, so New York, Los Angeles, and so on, so on. You can use your own categories. And then in this first row, I'm using another type of categories, but here I'm using dates okay so i'm using dates january february march april and so on so on you can use days weeks or months or years orders you name it but what is really important here is to have these two types of categories one in the first column and one in the first row and then for each one of the columns and for each one of the rows you're gonna have here some values you can use currency you can use numbers you can use percentage but it's important to be values okay numbers values then the first thing that I'm going to start here with is to create in a blank row uh, accumulated values. So we're going to just type it in here accumulated values in the first row. It's pretty much easy to do because accumulated value just added up all the previous values together. But here, because January is my first month, I actually don't have anything before it. So we're going to start here with zero. I'm going to just type it in actually a zero here. Enter. And then in the February column, March, April, we can actually do here the, the formula. Equal sign, or we can actually use a function that is called sum function. I can double click here, one, two, and then I can select here all the values that make up my January column. I can press enter. I can click here in this function, click hold and drag to the right to make sure all the columns here contain the same function. I'm going to do a similar thing here to the column G, for example. Let me just increase a little bit in size, okay? In the column G, I'm going to type it in total. And here I'm going to do a formula or a function to just add it up all the values that I have here that correspond to each one of the categories that I have. So here in the total, I'm going to use equal sign, some function, double click it, and then I select all the values that make up my first row. Enter. Now I can just click here and drag down that way, for example. And in this last cell here, I'm going to leave it in blank, or I can also just type in a zero here. This last column here is going to be responsible to be the, the last column that we have into your waterfall chart. Did you remember that last column that was the largest one? So the total is that column, the largest one. So this is why I need to use zero here, because if I just using the sum function and add up all these accumulated values, my last column in the waterfall chart is going to be the double of the size. So I can select everyone here. I can click insert. And then I can select the first chart that is the column chart. And then I'm going to select here the second option, stack the column. I can select it. And as you guys can see, it's not looking like a waterfall chart. But wait, we're going to improve it. I'm going to click here in this circle, click hold and drag to make sure I can increase the size, the area of the chart. And one little adjust that we can do here, instead of using these blue columns here over all the other ones, we actually need to change this position. We need to take it to underneath the other ones because this column right here is going to be responsible to raise the height of each one of the columns. And that way we can create the effect of the waterfall. So this blue column is going to be responsible to the height. So let me just right click in the blue column and then select date here to the left. Instead of using the accumulated value here underneath everyone, I can just click here in this upper arrow to move up. One, two, three, four, and we're done. Look, now we can just, let's say, read it off the color and make it transparent, and then you're going to have the height. Let me click here in OK. Now let me click in this blue column here underneath. I'm going to click in Format, and then I go to Shape View, and No Fill. And we're basically done, guys. So this is our waterfall chart. Okay, we can actually make some little adjustments here to make the chart look better, to use it in our presentation, into our report. The first thing that I'm going to start here is clicking the title and then read it off the title, delete it. Another thing that we can do, instead of using this void right here, there's a lot of blank space right here. Instead of using, let's say, 3500, I can actually use 2300, for example, because I'm not using this space here. So that way we can increase the area where we have the values. Okay, so let me just double click here in these numbers, one, two, to make sure I can just open this right panel. And instead of using a maximum number that is equal to 3500, I'm going to change to 3000, for example, enter. 
now we can close this panel and yeah it's much better another thing that we can do instead of just up the number by 500 to 500 can double click here again and i'm gonna use instead let's say 250 and now this legend that is just here below i can put it to the right so let me select the area of the chart and i can go to chart design here to the left add chart element and then legend to the right for example i think it's much better and this accumulated name here i can select it and then press delete i can read it off the name maybe another interesting thing to do here instead of just using these values to the left i can also add the values within these slices here i think it's much better to analyze and to see how much each one of these slices represent so with the chart selected i can click in chart design here to the left add chart element data label center for example and i can read it off these floating values here because these actually floating values they correspond to that column that we just read it off deleted to we actually done but we can continue to make some changes to make our chart a little bit better let me click in the chart again and then home tab and then i'm gonna put everyone in bold i'm gonna change the font color to a black color and i think it's good that way another thing that we can do is double click here in a column on two to open this right panel and instead of using the gap with 150%, I can change to 100%, for example, because that way you can make the columns a little bit juicier. Another thing that we can do is click here in the FX and then shadow and select the first option. But I need to do it for the orange one, for the gray one, for the yellow one, and then for the blue one. Okay, like this. And another thing that we can do is click here in the FIBA line, click in borders, solid line, select here a black color, for example, and instead of use the width 0.75, I can change to 0.5, for example. I'm gonna do it for everyone here. 0.5 is gray one, two, solid line with 0.5, yellow one, solid line with 0.5. Okay, I think it's much better our chart now, as you guys can see. And one thing that I really like to do into a waterfall chart is just to split one column to another. So we can actually add here some vertical lines to just split one category from another. I can click here in the chart and then in the chart design, I can go here to the left, add chart element. And I can select grind lines vertical, for example. Yeah, I think it's much better the way. And with the chart selected, I can click here in format, shape effects, shadow, and then I can select the first option, shape outline. I can select, let's say, a gray one. And I think now our waterfall chart is good. Of course, you can also change the colors of each one of the columns that you have. You can use any color that you want. I'm gonna leave it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, comment down below, let me know, and I see you tomorrow. As everybody has a new video, I see you there.